for example we said that okay number of uh, spellings or misspelled words may be a feature for identifying spam or number of uh, um, like presence of urgency word may be a feature presence of inappropriate language may be a feature Pres presence of uh, fake names may be a feature so there may be many features and we said that they can be converted into feature vectors and input to a machine learning model but in case of deep learning we said we input the text as it is into the system and we said to do that we first have to convert first we have to tokenize we have to split our sentence into different words or tokens and then each word has to be converted into a vector so <clears throat> we know how to represent it as one hot encoding <clears throat> where we have a vector which is the same size as our dictionary and each word represents a dimension so if you want to represent dog we said we can just make that dog dimension as one and all other values as zero this is one hot representation and we said this is not very helpful because these vectors doesn't have any relation with each other so dog is again one uh, and separate vector cat is a separate vector we cannot find a relation between cat and dog in this vector space and we said that a better way would be to use to distributional word representation and we also so an example how to create a distributional vector and then we, we uh, the third type is neural word embedding so we said in this neural embeddings we learn vectors or we learn an embedding matrix using a neural network now uh, and then we discussed about different challenges when we want to go from an individual word into a sentence we said individual words cannot correctly define a sentence remember this example when we said that how old are you and how are you are two different sentences with same words but very different meaning so individual words alone cannot define the semantics of a sentence so sentence is a group of words okay if you consider it as a bag of this is what we call as bag of words if we ignore the order if we ignore the order and take only the words in a sentence we call it as bag of words and you can consider sentence either as a bag of words or as a sequence of words so today we are going to discuss about sequence model what do you think would be a problem if i consider sentence as just bag of words can someone think of some problem and i if we say sentence is just a bag of words without any order do you think i'll give you an example let us say mary teaches john and under sentence john teaches mary what could you say about these two sentences if it is represented as bag of words will they have the same representation Seems. See if we if we take two sentences <clears throat> without considering the order of words, then we cannot identify meaning or difference in meaning because meaning is represented not just by the word but also the order in which the words appear. So sentences we consider it as a sequence of words. and rnn is a deep learning model which is widely used for sequence modeling so it is not just for nlp in any problem where you can represent the input as a sequence where you want to model as a sequence for example a video video is a sequence of frames or maybe an audio audio is a sequence of speed signals <clears throat> or maybe some time series data some continuous readings from a sensor So all these are sequence of input, and these sequences 
can be effectively modeled using recurrent neural networks. So this is what we call as RNN in short. So most of the figures are taken from a blog and some of them are from my own thesis. So I, I didn't individually acknowledge it. So Today's agenda is to introduce you to the concept of recurrent neural networks and an advanced form of RNN, which we call as long short term memory. So let us take an example, a typical usage of sequence modeling. Suppose you have a sentence a review and you want to classify it as positive or negative and also movie for a good Sunday nap, the example which is so excellent. So this is definitely a negative review. This is definitely a negative review. And to classify this as positive or negative, you need to have the entire sentence. You need a representation which captures this entire sentence. And using that representation only, you can identify whether it is positive or negative. And the example is auto completion or next word prediction. So I have a sentence like this. I took my cat for a dash. The next word, what would be the next word? Humans very easily can predict the next word as walk. I took my cat for a walk because we know cats are capable of walking and usually people do do this. So I took my cat for a walk. To identify what would be the word at the at this blank, we need to model or we need to know the meaning of the entire sequence that is coming before that. So these are some examples where sequence modeling are used. This, are just, this is just for example, almost all NLP problems, you could model it as sequence modeling problem, like question answering, similarity matching. Most of the problems you can model as sequence sequences. Now, if we're using a typical standard artificial neural network, or what we call a standard vanilla neural network, the vanilla is the standard thing without any fancy flavors. So <clears throat> let's take this example. So you will have a feedforward neural network with multiple layers, many layers of neurons stacked upon one another. And then you have an input. So here you can see this is a sentence with the seven words. So each word first you have to convert it into a vector that could be a one hot vector or it would be an embedding which you have uh, downloaded from a pre-trained model. So you have word vectors and then you are inputting the word vector into a neural network. So let us say each each word is represented by a hundred dimension vector. So you are here you have seven words that is 700 dimension vectors. You, are, you would be appending all the vectors together. <clears throat> so now you have a 700 dimension vector which is input to a feedforward neural network. So your first layer or the input layer will have 700 neurons. And in each layer, you will be doing some transformation and final output layer will be an output from a classifier, classifying it as positive or negative. This is how a standard or a very plain, simple neural network looks like. Now, what is the problem with this network? The first problem is sentences are of variable length. Okay. So some sentences may be small, some sentences may be long. So you can, if you are planning to have a fixed neural net, fixed size neural network, you will have to somehow handle this sentence size here since this is only seven letter seven word input if i have more than seven word either i have to truncate the remaining thing or i will have to suppose the sentence is lesser then i will have to pad it with zero so somehow i'll have to make an adjustment this is a drawback of standard vanilla neural network that is you cannot handle variable length input that is one problem so you can look at this example i took my cat for a walk so, so suppose i am filling it one at a time so first first time input is only i and i want to predict the word took okay. so input size is just one word 
Next time I want to take, I want to predict the word my. Next time I want to predict the word my. So my input is I took and output should be my. In the third case, my input would be I took my and then I have to predict the word cat. So you can see at each time the input size is increasing. So this is again another case where you need variable size input. So one solution you can do is you don't take the entire thing. You all take only the previous word. So I is the input. Output is took. Next time took is the input. Output is my. Give my as input. Give output as cat. So you look at only the just the previous word or maybe just the previous two words. But this is also not a very good solution because sentences can have long distance dependencies. Okay, just by looking at the previous word, if you are making a prediction, most of the time you may get it wrong. So you need to look at into a sufficiently long history, only then you can do a correct prediction. So this truncating or padding and all may not be a very attractive solution in this case. So this is where uh, the idea of recurrent neural network comes in. <clears throat> so when we are designing a sequence model, we need it to have some property. One is it should represent the sequential order of words, right? We cannot say, okay, instead of having seven words, I will have a vector neural network which takes just one word as input. So instead of every time, I will just add up all the previous words. For example, here, first I will just uh, have something like this. Input is I, output is took. Next time, I will take I plus took and out predict my. Next time, I will take I plus took plus my and then predict the word cat. So can I do a summation so that when you sum up, I will always have a fixed length vector. Not a good idea. When you sum it up, it is, it is a bag of word vector. That is, you are losing the order of sentence. So that is also not a good solution. So you need an, the neural network or the model or whatever model you are using. It should respect the sequential order of word. The order of words is important because John teaches Mary is not same as Mary teaches John. Second, you need to accommodate variable length sentences. So when the length of sentences changes, still your model should be able to handle it. And third, we need all words to have a have to have to be treated in the same way. So the same transformation has to be applied at all words. So it's not that when the word the comes in the beginning, it has a different meaning. And when it comes in the somewhere in the middle, it will be treated differently. No, we want all the words to undergo the same transformation. So to respect all these things, we use something called as recurrent neural network. So in programming languages, we are already familiar with recursive programs, right? So that is repeatedly you are calling the same function. So something like that is happening here also. You have a single neural network, okay? And neural network takes two inputs. So here, instead of having seven words as input, you have only two input to the model. One is the word itself and the second input is the output from the previous step. Please note, we call this as hidden state. So you have an input vector xt and a hidden state which is coming from the previous time step. So at every time step, you input one word and the hidden state of the previous word. So in this example, it will be something like this. I took the cat for walk. X0 is I. First, I am inputting the word I and here we will just input a random, randomly initialized vector x0 because at the first time step we don't have a previous thing. So you either you initialize z0 or maybe a, a random vector. Then next step. So once we get the output of this, this we call it as output hidden state from the first time step which is n1 or h1. This H1 is passed again to the same neural network. Okay? Though it is shown here as uh, different boxes, 
it is the same neural net which is called repeatedly so next time you pass h1 and along with that you pass the second word that is took so input to the second neural net is took and the previous hidden state h1 similarly we continue this so next again uh, in the next step i took my cat so input will be my and output so input will be my plus hidden state from the previous which is h2 so my and h2 together will again create another state uh, okay so there is a small uh, confusion in the numbering here the numbering is starting from h0 so never mind that is just how you decide to number it so here you have h1 h2 then h3 like that it's at each time step you have a hidden state and a previous sorry you have a hidden output as a hidden state and the input is hidden state from the previous time step plus a new word this is how a recurrent neural network works very simple so at every time step we can say that each hidden state represents the sequence which we have seen till now for example we can i can say h1 is a representation of i whereas h2 is a representation of i to h3 is a representation of i to my so each hidden state represents is an abstract representation of all the sequences or all the words the sequence which it has seen till now right. is that clear shall i move on so this is just a feed forward neural network which is being repeatedly applied to each token in the sequence now how do you train this you train this just like you train any other neural net at the final state at the final output you will give, be giving this hidden state into let us say ht you will be passing this ht into a classifier okay if your objective suppose you are training it for a sentiment classifier the output will be passed to us and classifier and i mean the last hidden state will be passed to a classifier and the classifier will out output it as positive or negative so initially your prediction will be wrong so you need to back back propagate the error you need to adjust the weights and then finally you need to keep on training it for it for each instance in the training set until you find a optimal weights for the neural net okay this type of propag this propagation we call it as back propagation time we are not going going to derive all that we'll just move on so this is a basic concept now what is the problem with the recurrent neural network okay this looks very beautiful so all the problems are solved now i can give uh, whatever length of input i want and it is pretty simple so it is just one input at a time and a hidden state from the previous time step now the problem happens when the input is too long okay so how many steps can the neural network really remember each time you are taking a hidden state and passing it again to the same neural net each time it is getting multiplied with some weights which is usually some real values below 1 and then after the multiple multiplications going on after many matrix operations going on by the time you reach the end of the sequence how much of the previous information will be still retained in the hidden state that's the question so you have an h1 h0 h1 h2 like that by the time you reach the end of the sequence how many of this information how much of this information would still be available in the hidden state for the neural network to make a correct prediction a simple example let us say a neural network and this is uh, the job is to predict the next word so input first input would be France is where I was born, but now I live in Boston. I am very fluent in dash. So this is the word I want to autofill. So in the first step, input is France. Second step, input is is then where I like that. By the time you reach the end of sequence, you want to predict the output as 
I am very fluent in French. Now, to identify that the answer should be French, you need an information that was given in the first time step. To predict that the output here in the, let's say, what is the time step here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. In the 18th step, you need an information that was given in the first step. Right? So this is an example of long distance dependency. Now, how do you will the will the rural network actually be able to do this? Is a question, and that is the reason why. LSTM was proposed because this retaining such information for a long period was not very effective in recurrent neural network. That's one problem. What happens when the input sentence is too long? Now, does or should all the words contribute equally to the final vector? Suppose, again, the same question, um, same neural network, but a different question, sentiment classification. So each word will have Some sentiments, okay, some words will be positive, some words will be negative, but according to the system, you can understand that by the time you reach end of six, end of the sequence, the final inputs will be having more effect on the, or more influence on the output than the previous words. Suppose you have a word great in the first, as a first word, in the first time step. You have an input called the input word great, whereas you have a pathet word pathetic at the end. So there is a possibility that the output will be more dependent on pathetic rather than on the great, on the word great, because pathetic is towards the end. This is another drawback of such sequential model. Then what if the gradients get too large or too small? This is another problem called uh, vanishing gradient or uh, uh, exploding gradient. So by repeated multiplication, the, if the values goes above some threshold, what happens is the neurons will always fire and it gets saturated. Right? Always the output will be one. So when you are trying to propagate, back propagate the results, your gradient will start or when you try to, you'll find that you will not be able to train the model because there is no change in the output of these networks, these, each neurons. So, so gradients can either become too high or it can go too long. In both cases, even if the gradient becomes too high, still the training can be halted. If the gradient becomes too small, also the grading can, uh, the Training can become halted. So this is another problem. Now, what if a word has long range dependency? This is what I said here. How does uh, the word in the end is dependent on the first word? Long range dependency with another word in the same sentence. So to overcome most of this problem, we came up with a new type of model called long short term memory network or shortly known as LSTM. What is an LSTM? This is an example of RNN and if you look inside you can see there is only a one vector that is being passed from each time step. So there is a, a vector h1, h2, h, etc. that is being passed from one time to another. It is undergoing. So inside the box you can see what is happening. h1 is getting concatenated with x3. So the so that input is combined, xt and ht minus 1 is combined and then it is going through a activation function, this is scan h, it's going through an activation function and then it's producing a result and most of the information is getting lost in between. Now, the idea behind LSTM is to provide an additional memory, to provide an additional memory which can retain the information for a longer time. So think of this in this way. Let us think of an analogy. When we humans, okay, when we are reading a text, we are reading a page or we are preparing for an exam or we are preparing for a presentation. Now, you might be quickly going through the notes of the textbook and 
you might each time you are reading a word okay there is something in you that makes you decide whether i should remember this word or not okay we don't usually remember all the words right we try to retain only the important information that is required when you read a text just uh, some people have the habit of underlining also when you're, when you are learning or when you are doing something you just underline the important words so that you just you can remember all those all those important keywords and remember the rest sorry forget the rest okay. so you based on your input based on your reading you are deciding whether that word has to be retained in your memory or you can forget it so it's not only based on your current word you are reading it is also based on the previous things that is already in your memory okay. so there is some information that's previously being stored and as you go reading this you will decide whether i should remember this word whether this is important and i should remember or whether i can forget so can we have something similar in an rnn so this is where the extra vector called state vector sorry memory cell comes in cell state or memory extra memory cell okay. represented by the letter c for cell so here i have a hidden state and a cell now let's see how this works so you have previously you had only this red colored vector which was the hidden state it was coming from the previous state going through some transformation and then going to the next state so now we have an additional uh, memory cell cell state so what it does is it uses a concept called gate okay what is a gate maybe think of gate as something which allows you to allow a value to pass through so gate can be it is nothing but a vector gate is nothing but a vector which is point wise multiplied by a state okay so if all the values in the gate are one when you do a point wise multiplication that is you multiply 0.3 into 1 0.7 into 1 0.8 into 1 0.2 into 1 when you do a point wise multiplication if all the values are 1 you get the vector itself right? that is an open gate all the values pass through a closed gate is where all the values are zero so when you do a point wise multiplication what happens the vector becomes zero so now all the values are zeros so the vector is lost it doesn't pass through the gate but in for all practical purposes the gate will not be completely zero or completely one it will be mostly zeros it would be would be a parse vector with some real values okay so partial gate allows only relevant information to pass through whereas other informations will be lost so this is the basic idea behind gate so gates are vectors now the question is from where do i get this value how do i know whether i want to keep the gate open or whether i want to keep the gate closed let us see how it is done so here whatever the this are gates f stands for forget i stands for input and o stands for output so when an input comes in i need to decide should is this word important is this current word important should it be retained or not so this gate i filters out or selects relevant information and passes it to the next state right or input is a concatenated vector of hidden state and the input and this gate will filter out only the relevant information needed next gate is forget gate okay forget gate decides how much information from the previous memory has to be retained so already there is a memory there is a previous cell memory so how much information from the previous memory should i retain in this step that is decided by f and then o is the output gate which decides how much information should i pass to the next time step 
So we have a forward gate, an input gate, and an output gate. Forward gate gates are vectors that filters out information from a state. Right. So forget gate's duty is to decide how much has to be remembered. How much of the information which is already there in the memory has to be retained in the memory. How much can be forgotten? Input gate decides how much information or what information from the current input need to be passed on. And output gate decides how much of the memory from this time step need to be passed on as hidden state to the next unit or the next time step so you can think of hidden state as a working memory and you can think of memory state as a memory which is retained throughout the process okay hidden state is a working memory and another one is the memory that is retained for long range so this is a basic idea now so there is a cell state which is passing through all the thing and something is happening in the, inside it so now the question is as I said, gates are vectors. You can keep it open or closed. But how do you decide whether a gate should be opened or closed at a time step? It is based on two things. It is based on your previous memory as well as, not previous memory, sorry, previous hidden state as well as current input. So you use a neural network, a simple neural network to find this gate vector. So input is the current word and the previous hidden state. From the current word and the, and the previous hidden state, you decide what is the gate vector that you need in this time step. This is a simple uh, affine function. That is, you just uh, concatenate these vectors here you have a set of weights, multiply it by the set of weights, go through an activation function, and you get an output vector, and that output vector is a gate. A simple feedforward neural net. A single layer neural net where you have an input layer and an output layer. Now, mm, so RNN select just relevant information and forget the rest, and what uh, that is the basic idea. You use a neural net to learn the value of gate and then use this gate to decide how much information has to be passed on. This is an LSTM architecture as you can see here. Don't be confused, don't be worried about all this fancy boxes and circles. At first time when you see it, you may feel that it is somewhat confusing, but actually it's very simple. So each gate has only two things. One is it has a activation function and then uh, this cross is point wise multiplication so you have a neural net it goes through an activation function and that output vector is multiplied by some state vector so here you can see input maybe individually we can see yeah. the forget gate input to the forget gate is hidden state plus current current word concatenate these two vectors join them give it to a neural network neural network gives you the forget gate forget gate or the vector or the gate vector now you got that you need to multiply it with previous state right forget gate is to decide how much from the previous memory has to be forgotten so you multiply it with ct minus one ct is the cell memory that you have multiply it with the cell state and you get the output next input again input look at look at look at this input gate input is previous state and the current input it goes through a neural net you get an output vector which you call as input gate multiply it with the input value itself the input gate is deciding how much of the input has to be given in. So you multiply it with the input itself and then you get the result. So after that, in the next state, 
here you can see you have to output two values one is the hidden state and the memory cell so here as you can see the next memory cell the value that is retained in the memory it is sum of output from the forget part and out uh, that is it is a summation of the memory that is retained by the forget gate plus the value that comes from the input gate okay. so input value some information is filtered out by the gate and the remaining is the here again some information has been filtered out from the memory and the remaining is here and these two together forms the next cell memory and the value from the cell memory need not be passed entirely to as hd here an additional gate called output gate comes in so from the cell memory uh, only the relevant information need to be passed on as hidden state so this is hd right from the cell memory you can see cell memory is sum of ct some part of ct minus 1 and some part of input together forms the cell memory and from the cell memory again some values is filtered out by the output gate and remaining goes into hidden state i think this figure will be a bit more easier to understand you can think about think of this as a pipe and you can think of this as some uh, like like think of it as a water pipe or something where water is flowing through these pipes and you are adjusting these pipes to decide how much of the water should go on so you can think of this the blue memory which is a memory retained for long range and then you have a red memory which is for uh, working memory and how much of them Uh, some information from the cell memory is adjusted using forget gate and pass it is passed on some information from the hidden state is again adjusted and it is passed on these two together comes here combined flows as new cell memory and from the new cell memory some information is filtered out and remaining flows as new hidden state so an easy way to this would be a very very simplified thing okay but this would be an easy way to make your students understand the basic analogy between this flow of information and flow of some liquid in the pipe so in the, in the next session you will be having a practical session i think and manu will be showing you how to use an lstm for text classification some of the applications of rnn so before i move on like uh, this is the last slide any doubt in this or you think that you need a bit more explanation of these diagrams or something crnn has a wide application in nlp so it can be used for as i said one example is Uh, sentiment and classification so here each of these blue boxes are an lstm and the input x1 x2 x3 at every time step you are giving an a single word as input and at the last step you get the output that is as positive or negative so in another application as you can use it in ner or pos stagger ner is named entity recognition that is at every time step you have an output also that is for example you need um you need to identify whether each word is uh, named entity or not 
So if I if I am giving this sentence, I was born in France. So I I was and all are not Enyas, but when you go to France, you want to give France as a new identity. So at each time step, when you give the first input, it will give zero. It's not an Enya. Second input, it's an Enya. Third input, it's not an Enya. Like that, at every time step, you can have an output, or you can have an output at at the last step. And then there is something called encoder decoder model, which we'll be seeing. I think it is scheduled for Thursday or Friday. More applications of RNN and LSTM you'll be seeing. So since there is time, I think. I can actually explain this equation also. So WF is a weight matrix for this neural network. HT is the hidden state, and XT is the input, which is the concatenated vector, which is passed as an input to this WF. And then you have, at every point, you have a bias vector B. And the output from this, so it'll be something like WF1 into HT1 plus WF2 into HT2, like that. And then it will be summed up and given as an input to a sigmoid function. And based on this input, you get a Vogel. Similarly, in the input here, you can see first HT minus 1 and XT goes through a neural net WC. Okay, Its activation function is tan H. WC. So how many can someone answer how many weight metrics will we have in each neural net? You have one weight matrix for forward gate, one weight matrix for input gate, and one weight matrix for this neural net for input, and then one for Output gate. W, w O, W C, W I, and W H are the set of weight matrix for a one LSTM unit. And since this LSTM unit is the same set of weight is shared in every time step, no matter how, how much uh, length your input is. It's always now the size of this will be always fixed. Another application of uh, RNN is in, let us say, sequence to sequence modeling. That is, for example, you have an input and input sentence, and output is also a sentence. For example, in machine translation, right? Machine translation, you want to, you cannot do something like this, just like you do an NES or NER or POS diagram. Suppose you are giving an input as, um, input is Avan Vital Pui, and output is you want to translate it into an English statement. So it will be, he went home. You cannot do a word by word translation. Okay. So you cannot say, uh, he home went. Okay. That is wrong. You have to have, you read, you have to read the entire sentence and only then you can start translating. So it will be something like this. You will have an RNN which reads one word at a time. And after that, when all the input is over, the output from the last state will be passed on to the 
next RNA. Output from the last stage will be passed on to the next RNA. So now here, so uh, input is, okay, it's difficult to write in Malayalam. Okay, something, I'll just write the first letter. So output will be key went home. So this is an example of maybe I already have a figure. I'll show you. This is an example of in encoder decoder model or you can call it as seek to seek model or sequence to sequence model so input is a sequence and output is a sequence see, unlike a pos tagger or any tagger you are not getting out at every time step first the entire sequence is read and then you have an output vector which is a representation of that entire sequence now this vector is given as input to the next rnn and here at each time step, you will have something like this. You will have something like this, right? So the first time step, output is he. Second, second time step, again, the input is the previous word he, and also the previous hidden vector, and output will be the next word went again next the hidden vector from the previous state here is a current word which is went and then the next word to predict is home this is called as an encoder decoder model or sequence to sequence model i'll show you a figure and be more clear from that This is an ex example of encoder, decoder model, or seek to seek model. So one problem, this is typically used in machine translation, in question answering, such, pro such cases where input is a sequence and then output is also a sequence. One main problem with this encoder, decoder model is that all the information from the first sentence need to be contained in this output vector and the entire sequence output sequence has to be generated using this single vector so the question is how much information can you squeeze into a single context vector so this is output is just an s so entire sentence is being represented by a single vector so how much information can this a single vector actually retain and will you be able to generate or recreate the entire output from the single sector. This is called, uh, this is a bottleneck problem or the info in encoder decoder models. And to overcome this, an idea called attention mechanism was introduced. Okay, so attention mechanism, now you see this word very often when you're talking about transformers. But attention mechanism was first introduced in LSTM to overcome this bottleneck problem. So attention mechanism, you can relate it to something like this. When you're reading a text, right, you pay attention to certain words, right? You know that you need to pay attention, uh, more attention to some words and less attention to some words, okay? So this is represent, this idea is represented using attention scores in LSTM. So here LSTM, you can see there is uh, multiple hidden states. So here you can see one, two, three, four. There are four hidden states. Right? But we are looking at only the last state S. Instead, we need information from all the previous states. We need information from all the previous states. Suppose in this previous example, when I said uh, okay. when I said that I want to 
convert the sentence avan veetil poi as he went home when i am translating the word home okay oh, whatever i have written it is gone sorry when i am translating the word home you want to pay attention to the word veetil because it is that word that is contributing to that translation home okay but other words need not get that attention so at every time step we need to pay different level of attention to different states so this is the basic idea instead of using the last hidden state you take all the hidden state as input not just the last state you need all the hidden state as input but you need to pay different attention to different states maybe when you are translating the first word you want to pay attention to the word loud when you are translating the second when you are generating the second word you want to um, pay more attention to heat when you are translating the third word now you want to pay more attention to heat so at every time step you need different attention to different words so this is done by learning an attention score an attention score again it is learned the same way just like uh, you take the input give it to an See. Maybe I'll explain to you with this diagram. So attention scores, you you need different attention. Suppose here we have an or first state vector which is in orange, second state vector which is shown in red, like that in different colors, different here in state H1, H2, H3, H4, like that. And let us say we have hidden attention scores A1, A2, A3, A4, etc. So it is A1 into H1. Plus A two into H two, A three into H four, like that. Okay, so this scores is represented by an attention vector. So each time, at every time step, you multiply the hidden state with the attention score and sum it up, and this attention vector is passed to the decoder along with the final state. Every time you are passing this attention vector to the decoder. Every uh, every time you need to learn a attention way. So this is again adjusted during training. The attention scores. There is no magic to find out this attention scores. You don't know what would be the attention scores before you start uh, uh, like predicting. So at every step you will be adjusting this during training, and finally you come up with the best set of scores which you can. i think so actually i was not planning to take this attention mechanism today since we had time i just pushed in if there is no doubt maybe i think we can wind up this session participants uh, anyone have any doubt please ask okay then uh, now we can stop the session thank you so much reena ma'am for such an enlightening session and uh, it was such an informative and effective session for all of us you have explained everything from the start and from the base and it was such an effective session for all of us especially for those who are interested in this area for work with thank you so much ma'am mm -hmm. thank you namita Okay. I don't know. Like, see, uh, if we are hearing this all for the first time, I I don't think that they people would get it actually. 
I, I have tried to keep it simple, but still, if it is, if you are listening to this for the first time, definitely it's going to be a bit heavy, I think. LSTM and all when you're learning for first time, at least I hope they get a small idea what LSTM is that when they read further, they will be able to understand it better. That is the only thing we can hope. We okay. didn't go into any of the mathematical part, actually. We just kept it very simple. Okay, sure, definitely. Okay, then uh, now we can stop this session and the next session will start from 11. Next, next session will start from 11 a.m. and is about text classification. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you.